cocaine addiction, addicted to cocaine. Eight years, she has not graduated. She has gone to four universities. We have gone to four rehab homes. We cannot do anything. I can't even preach. I can't even do my work. Man of God. Are you a minister of God? Yes, man of God. I am down. We don't know what to do. Man of God. That's why I ran to you. I know you are my spiritual director. Man of God, help me. Look at the, the specimen. Is here in my hands. This is the cocaine, uh, the samples she, was, she has been taking. Cocaine, marijuana, drinking, sleeping in, in the bunks. Stay in the, in the cocaine bunks. She has sold all our things. We are, we are, we are now poor because of, of this. All the money, she still carries money. She carries money. Anywhere she sees money. If she doesn't see money, she will carry our appliances. She will carry equipment. She will carry everything. And we need to go and pay ransom. I'm tired of paying ransom. We've gone everywhere. We are even owing some doctors. Man of God, help me. Man of God, help me for eight years. Elle a une addiction à la drogue, à la cigarette. My family is delivered. My daughter is delivered from addiction. Thank you, Jesus. Emmanuel, my name is Joy Ode. I'm from Koshiva State, and I stay in Abuja. What brought me to um, the synagogue church was cocaine addiction and marijuana addiction. For eight years, I've been taking this substance, and it has ruined my life and done so many things to me. It all started when I was in school. I started 100 level in university in Abuja. I went into school to study electrical engineering. Okay. Yes. My roommate was into drugs. I didn't know. So one day, she invited me to follow her out. We went out, and... What happened was we met people that were doing drugs. I was so naive, I didn't know what was going on. She asked me to try what to try it and I did. And since then it has been hell for me. For three years I was into it. I I, I almost did it every day in school and it stopped me from going to lectures. Even when I go to lectures I don't concentrate. I'll be sleeping in class. Or I'll take excuse and leave because I was, I was under the influence of cocaine or marijuana. So it happened that for three years I was into it. My family didn't know about it. So when they got to know about it, it became a problem in the house for me. They tried so much to help me. They took me to rehabs. They took me to different churches. I've been to different places, I can't even count, just to seek help, to stop. It cost me a lot because for, I, went, I entered the university to study a course of five years, but for eight years now I haven't been able to complete it. It got bad after three years. When I had run out of money, there was nothing for me to use anymore. I started stealing from the house. I was still iPads, I was still phones or laptops just to feed my, my addiction. I would sell them. So, and that's what I was doing for some time. And after that, when there was nothing else to sell in the house, um, I indulged in the internet. When I post the pictures, men would come, would send, would chat, I would chat with men and they would send the location, they want to meet me up. So that's, with that, I'll meet them up and, you know, sleep with them just to get money. But that's what, that was what my life was basically into. I was just, I was, it was just drugs all day. There was no other concentration. I couldn't concentrate in school. My family, I was having problems, causing problems at home. There was no peace. This brought so much shame and disgrace my way, and it made me very uncomfortable all around. I was not happy at all. The worst experience I had was, there was a time I was, I met a man. He took me to his hotel room, and while in the process of sleeping, he, it, it became massive. He transformed and changed into a beast, and that scared me a lot. I woke up and jumped up from the bed. I was so scared. I didn't know what to do. But eventually, God helped. Everything subsided. The man, he, 
he calmed down because he was, he was, I think he was going to use me for ritual. That was the event that was going to take place. But God helped me. In that so even, even with that experience you had, you still went back into this drug. You were still moving around with men, sleeping around with men. Yes, it didn't stop me from doing it. Mm. Instead, the, the problem doubled. The drug addiction got worse. It was, no matter the situation, like no matter the experience I had, I was still going back. I find myself going back into taking drugs. Okay, what happened was that finally my family found out about it and we've been trying for years just to get me off it but to no avail. So what happened at home, my mom and my sisters, they started watching Emmanuel TV and they saw the miracles that were going on. My mom decided and said, we're going to come here. I, initially, I didn't want to come. The demons and spirits in me were trying to stop me from coming. So, but eventually I came. There was a time we were supposed to come. I left the house. I ran out of the house just to go and get drugs to take because I didn't think I was going to be able to stop or to quit. So eventually we came and the man of God prayed for me. We joined the prayer line. He prayed for me. And since then, I'm having no craving. I'm not even thinking about it. It's not in my mind anymore to do drugs or take oh. drugs anymore. To God be the glory. Shall we put our hands together for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for what the Lord has done in the life of our sister, transforming her life. Wow. We thank God Almighty for what the Lord has done in your life. Good morning, church. People of God, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Apostle Anne Ugbo. I live in Abuja, and the girl standing here is my beloved daughter, the problem that brought us to Synagogue Church of Nation is a um, problem of drug addiction. I want to say that there's God in this altar. Are you in this place? The God of T.B. Joshua, the God of senior prophet T.B. Joshua, my spiritual director is God indeed. I want you to put your hands together for this wonderful God. The problem started eight years ago. As you can see, Joy, she's a very pleasant girl. Joy had the dream of becoming a pilot. In her secondary school, when she graduated at the age of 17, turning to 18, she had one of the best results. She was the school's general prefect, and she graduated as the best all-round students, well-behaved and academic-wise. So based on this, she said she wants to be a pilot. So my husband now said, okay, what course will we do to lead you to becoming a pilot? The nearest course was engineering. She thought she could go to aviation school in uh, Zaria. But my husband said, no, it's good for you to have the first degree, and then after that, you can go to aviation school or aeronology or something and continue there. So we took her to the university in Abuja, a private school, where we were paying nothing less than two million a year. And in that school, as naive and innocent as she was, she had a roommate like she had told us who introduced her into drugs. The first year, her result was okay, first semester. Second semester, we discovered she started having problems. Then this year two, first semester, problems. Then we had to visit the school to find out what was the problem. So their counselors did all they could to see how they can help her. We discovered that even that second semester, year two, was still not okay. Then they, she moved on to year three. It was worse. She did not even write the exams the first semester, and that was it. So when we discovered that she was into drug, we now withdraw her 
from the boarding house and say, okay, you have to go from home. And then we monitored her going to school. We discovered some days when she goes to school, she will not even get to school. She will be out. So when it became so much, we discovered that she was losing weight, dropping and getting thinner and thinner. We now had to seek the services of uh, rehab homes. We took her to the first rehab. She recuperated a little. When she went back, she relapsed. We took her to the second one, the same thing. Then we now took her to the third one. After that, we took her back to school. We said, okay, let's change the university. We changed that one to another one. In fact, this second one, she did not even go to school any day. So when we discovered, we took her away from there to a very far distant university outside Abuja this time. She was there. They said they would take her only in year one. So somebody who has been in year three, about to go to year four now, was demoted to year one. We said, okay. She stayed there, year one, year two. Year three, problems started so much again. I was even called to come and take her home. So that's how we took her back to Abuja. Children of God, it is not a pleasant ex um, experience that you have your loved ones, even your worst enemy, to be involved in what we call drugs. Not only maybe marijuana or what, she was addicted to cocaine, even crack. You can know how, those who know will know the danger that is there. So when we now brought her home, I was praying and crying. I said, I don't know what to do. She said she's going to go back to the first school. We now went back there. Those ones said, okay, if she can start, she will, they will take her back in year three to start year three. We now said, okay, no problem. We even paid some money. The day we paid the school fees was the day we finally saw her. She just went, she didn't go to school, she was out, and it took prayer and fasting for us to even locate where she was. So after all this, we now said, what are we going to do? Like she said, we've prayed, we've fasted, we've gone from one place to the other, what you hear the prophets or, pro or pastors will tell you is that this girl is a star, yes, she's a prophetess, she has the call of God and all that. But how to cast out the demon or the problem was a problem. Women and men of God, that's how we continue. I want to tell you that for us to come here was by the special grace of God. So when we discovered that she was into addiction, I, we kept an eye on her. If she goes out and comes back, we will search. And the things we discovered, and some of those things you saw me brought to synagogues as uh, evidence. We see her taking cocaine. I have seen cocaine in its natural form through her. We see, see her taking a marijuana, Jack will just sit down with you, like you see, we discuss very pleasantly, but you will not know when Joy has left the house. And where does she go? Like she has told you, she goes to places, but the major place that she goes to is the bunk. Children of God. The bunk experience is what broke me down. Yes, we believe uh, this is actually uh, tears of joy because uh, all those things now are things of the past. And today we want to glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for restoring your daughter back to her original position, how the Lord Almighty created her. So when she goes to the bunk, in that bunk, all manner of people. If you don't have money, you give yourself in order to get the substance. Apart from that, she engaged, like she said, in carrying our equipment. We don't have any laptop, we don't have phones, we don't have iPads in our house anymore, even television. She has taken all. The ATM card, if she sees it, she'll just go and withdraw the money that is in the account, just to take it to that place. There are times, handbags, anything, jewelry, anything valuable, she will take it there, just to be able to get the 
the cocaine. So this is what she has been done, is a rhetoric. And then I remember when it became so much, we took her to the last rehab home, chained. If I, if, if I bring my phone, the picture is there where she was chained. And in that place, you know, she jumped and left rehab or she escaped. How she did, nobody knows. It remained um, um, a mystery. So she kept on like that, like that. When she comes back to the, whole, to the house, for me here, in fact, this is a girl who does not know how to, you know, she respects so much, but now, Joy started insulting, fighting. You, you don't then need to say you want to advise her. She will abuse the hell out of you, whether me or the father or the siblings. That's what, you know. Before we came, when we planned that, we planned four times to be here. She escaped. So after that, I went to tell my pastor. I said, this is what happened. He said, it is time now for you to go and see Papa. So we now left with her. We said we are going to come. She ran. So we had to start fasting. The church had to go on fasting for us to be able to locate joy. We have been watching Emmanuel TV. I sleep and wake on Emmanuel TV. And this very day, I saw a boy from Abuja who was healed of addiction. I saw another girl from America who was also healed. When she left, we now did a vigil on Emmanuel TV. We're there sleeping where Emmanuel TV is till the next day. After the second day, she now came back and said she was going to follow us to Synagogue Church of All Nations. So when I came on prayer line, I could see she was afraid and ashamed, telling me, Mommy, you want to come and disgrace me here again? I said, the devil that has disgraced us all these years, and we that today, today is the final day, the final battle. Let us go there and let all of us go and disgrace ourselves there. So I now said, I must show she was begging. I said, no. So when Papa was coming, I was now crying to him. I said, please, you should help me because this girl has really, really been a problem. As you can see, I am a pastor, but I cannot go out to do my work. Because if I am not at home, Joy will, will climb the fence, will break everywhere, fight everybody, and will go. It's only me and the senior brother that can curtail her. So I can't move, I can't do anything, I can't even pray. So when we came that day, and then I was crying, and luckily, to God be the glory, Papa heard my cry. And as soon as senior prophet T.B. Joshua, my spiritual director, lifted up his voice, he commanded the spirit and the spirit obeyed. And that is how it has been. Right from that day till today, she has not thought of addiction. Before we, that day, where the hotel we were, she was smoking every day. She would smoke in the morning, smoke in the evening. I would just be crying and say, God, how will a woman, a mother, stay and see a child, a loving child, doing this kind of thing? I could not help. I could not do anything, but on that day, senior prophet T.B. Joshua, oh, God will bless you. God will bless you because this problem has taken me everywhere. This problem has wrecked us. We have gone to hospitals. We have gone to, we are owing some places right now because of this. The last place she was, the doctor kept her for three weeks. And then he said, after that, she bolted out, yes, Nothing happened, but we still need to pay. So for you to have saved us, God to have used you to save us from this problem, this, uh, this case, the whole of my family was in shambles. My husband, my children, everybody is in shambles. The only problem we have that has not allowed us, that has brought us down, brought us poverty, was this case of joy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say amen, how much money that has been taken away, carted away from us. Mm. The people in the bunks in Abuja, they know me. Every one of them, they cry and follow me. Everybody will be saying, look at this fine girl. Look at this fine girl. But there was nothing we could do until we came to Synagogue Church of Nation. Until we came to, our, to, to, to Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua. 
Wow, to God be the glory. Shall we put our hands together beautifully for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? My advice to you is that they should stay away from drugs. It doesn't pay. It only brings you shame, disgrace, depression, pain, and reproach. So my advice is that they should stay away from it. And if you know you're doing drugs you, and you need help, you know you need help, and you've been to so many places, I think you should give Synagogue Church of All Nations a try because there is God here and he has delivered me and I believe he'll deliver you too. Yes, you mean they should seek God and look for a living church so that they can receive their deliverance as well. Well, we thank God Almighty. We thank you for that wonderful advice. And we also we want to advise you that remember, as God Almighty has delivered you and set you free, make sure you make God's word the standard for your life. Let God's word channel you. Let your heart and mind be filled with God's word so that that deliverance you have received will remain permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Emmanuel. Children of God, celebrate with me. Emmanuel. If you know what, what, what I was going through, you will understand what I'm saying now. I want to advise everybody, those seated here and those outside here, this is the place to be. I am a minister, but I am here. I have come here because anointing pass anointing. Grace pass grace. Don't sit back. The man... Senior Prophet T.B. Joshua has been given to Africa, to Nigeria in particular, free. Why do we sit down and die? I am calling on all of us Nigerians. This is time for you to come. There is no problem that cannot be solved here. We went everywhere. They say addiction case cannot be healed. They say addiction, ah, that one is for life. But today I am standing here to give glory to God that my daughter is free. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter whether you're a bishop, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a prophet. Please come here. This is a man that God has ordained for our generation. Can you rise up and give God the glory for our purpose? Okay. Wow. We thank God Almighty. We know our mother is actually overjoyed for what the Lord has done in her life. What seemed impossible, God Almighty has made it possible in the life of this family. And that is why we see our mother overjoyed and advising us that we should seek God Almighty because there's nothing impossible for God to do. There's nothing impossible for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to do in our lives. So, Mother, we also want to encourage you. Remember, God's word has healed, delivered, and set your family, your daughter free. Make God's word the standard for your life and continue to draw your strength from God. And we believe that God Almighty will definitely see you through in all your endeavors in Jesus' name. <laughs> 